tiny ones would be the radishes, and then those would be the uh, turnips, the other ones. The 1946 model fancy radishes. Mom, look at that one. So this is the slide that open, or the the handle that opens the slide on the bottom that allows the seed to come down to what I call the whirly bird. Cranked like this. And it broadcasts the seed out as it falls onto that through momentum. Um, we looked at the label on this. We think it's a 1946 model. I got to use it when I was a kid. Uh, I'm not going to say I perfectly know how to calibrate it. The tag on the bottom was a little tough to read, so I kind of had to um, scientifically guess a little bit on how I did it. I already did a little of this field already. I took and figured them poster about an 8 foot spacing, so two posts is about 16 foot. So I have them kind of go about every 16 foot and I check my seat where it's landing after a couple of passes to see that I'm getting an overlap, a little bit of an overlap, so we get a good coverage of the field. Uh, it just takes a little while. Um, you gotta wait, see how your germination is. So we'll go to seeding the rest of the field now. I have about four more passes to do and we should have it done. The seeding rate was about five pounds of the acres if we uh, sowed it in. I think we're probably about 10 with broadcasting, but with broadcasting, a little higher seeding rate isn't all bad because your germination rate sometimes is less because not all seed gets into the soil. So, tally ho and away we go. Now go. Hard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like, bud? I don't know. Was it hard? Yeah. Was it hard to spin? You want me to, to, you want me to hold oh, it and you turn reach. it? Yeah. Okay, you ready? Okay, you want to turn it this way. If you go this way, I'll unseat it. Well, actually, it'll only turn so much. You ready? Okay, you ready? Turn it. Okay. Other way, other way. Ready? Keep going. Other way. <laughs> Good job. Okay, so right here, this is one of the uh, um, uh, turnip seeds. Uh, they're the lighter colored ones. There was also rape seed. You can kind of see one here, and then there's a couple of radish seeds here. They're a little harder to see. But anyway, I go and I look at, like, right here, this... Uh, I'll find one of these uh, uh, turnip seeds and then I move over a little bit and try to find and make sure that we can find another one that's relatively close, knowing that way that we're getting at least even, if not a little bit of an overlap on our edges. We're supposed to get more rain yet today and throughout the week, so that should hopefully settle the seed to help make sure that it uh, germinates. And so like I say, we just kept, let's keep moving along. Hopefully by God's grace, we guesstimated right. So. We just bless this field and declare it uh, going to grow well. And Why did you choose radishes and the three things that you did? Well, because that's what the co-op had, but after talking to them, they're a taproot, uh, so they go down into the ground. You know, they're all a tuber or a larger root, and so they will actually help to penetrate the soil, which will help aerate it. Because if you look out there, you can see where there's some grass that's still growing. There is a lot of compaction in that uh, when I originally uh, mo boarded it up, uh, it didn't tear up really well, and mo boards roll stuff pretty hard. And I've been over it about four times now with that old disc that's out there. It also puts nutrients in the soil as it rots, as the uh, uh, roots rot into the soil and stuff. And then on the top side, there's a lot of leaf. All those plants have a lot of leaf, so they will produce uh, cover. So hopefully it'll help to kill off the grass. I know that's weird to say, but we would like to get this eventually to a 100% sand going crop. So a little bit of the journey on this field. Uh, my understanding, well actually I know from 
obviously my current owner, the current owners, my <coughs> in-laws, but also some friends of mine I used to work for. This place actually used to be an old dairy. And so I don't know if this old field was a place where they turned out the old dairy cows or what, but over the course of time, its production had went downhill quite drastically. And we are wanting to get it into some sand foin. So that way we can help to feed mama's bees, our bees, all our bees. And my goats. And the goats. We and really want to try to see if my goats, we haven't gotten any yet. We know people in the area do bale up sand foin, but um, we've never gotten any. And we've heard that um, goats really like it and they're more apt to eat the stems. And see, my goats don't like the alfalfa stems. They're too, uh, I guess, big and um, coarse, probably coarse. bitter. And they don't like them because a lot of times the the ranchers want more bang for their buck so to speak and they'll let the alfalfa and grass grow as much as they can um, before baling it so they get more volume but then that means that it's more coarse and my goats don't like it but sand point might be an option and so i'm believing i'm hoping just like the word of god talks about our lives and how uh, the seed will eventually fall on good ground and we're hoping this is going to be good ground and produce a physical harvest of 30 60 and 100 fold but in our own lives, we want to constantly be preparing our hearts, our ground, to receive uh, God's seed, His Word stuck into our hearts, and it to produce a 30, 60, and 100 fold uh, increase in our lives. And so, anyway, we're been a journey. We're not at the end of it yet, but we're going to hope and believe and pray that the next few days, with the moisture coming and uh, then some sunshine, we'll have us a crop out here. So, stick with us and hopefully in the future you can see a video of forage this this tall <laughs> and maybe even swathing it if it produces well enough so and the pigs in it eating mm -hmm. that'd be fun to have the pigs in here rooting around and hopefully they stay in because the neighbors probably don't want them rooting up their lawn Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing running you're practicing running on my horse. Oh, you've been riding your horse, haven't you? Were you helping on the tractor the other day? Uh, yeah. You were a good tractor driver, huh? Yeah. You jo like helping in the swather? Yeah. Well, when we were plowing it, though, Josiah was the supervisor on the ground. I think he was uh, quality control, making sure it was getting a quality job done. So you may be where we are right now as well, where you are, are trying to get your, your little place up off the ground and, and it's you're realizing how much time and work it takes and sometimes there's the setbacks and the, the things that, that just don't work sometimes. But remember that it is so important to not give up and not to lose faith in what you're doing. That the long-term goal is something to, to remember and reach for and to have faith that, that what you're doing will produce and will have an effect in your life, your family's lives, and your animals' lives if you don't give up. And so just this field is kind of our, if you've ever watched the movie, and I, I encourage you to, watch the movie Faith Like Potatoes. It's really good, it's encouraging, and it's something that we always think about, is, is our faith like potatoes in that movie. And, and so this is our planting of seeds, and we're gonna just believe that it's going to grow and, and produce like we need it to. And so just follow along with us and subscribe, hit that bu bell button and you can join our family and watch us grow and watch us just walk along this journey and you can, can walk, we can be parallel walking along our journeys together and encourage each other and, and just uh, say, good job and keep it going and so for you don't give up keep going and um, and enjoy the process as you do